Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, we've got our CJ6 uh, Wrecker Jeep out again. And uh, I've got a little job to do today. And I'm going to show you another attachment that I have for this vehicle. And this is kind of like my uh, Swiss Army Jeep. It's got a little bit of everything going on and I use it quite a bit for different projects around the farm here. So today, I think you can see that, we've got the gin pole set up. And that attaches back to our wrecker um, eyes here. You know, that's what holds the wrecker part of it up the boom. And we're in the same eye as that. And then those cables run right up to the top. That's a 22 foot gin pole. And we've got to set some steel today. So we're going to set a piece of steel and do some welding. And you can see I've got it hooked up to the front PTO winch. Try and give you a shot of the whole thing here. Well, I think you get the idea. I couldn't get the backhoe or my tractor high enough to lift what we need to lift today. So I put this on. And... Um, you know, it's for those things that are awkward and not terribly heavy, but you uh, you can't lift them by hand. So, we'll lift it with this and get it set, and uh, I'll get you some welding shots and uh, show you what we're doing. Okay, uh, I'm going to reset and uh, go out in the back, and uh, I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, what I did here was put a quarter inch plate in the top of our 6x6 box tubing. That's quarter inch wall tubing. This is going to stand straight up and we can't have any water going down inside of the um, inside the tube there. It'll just uh, freeze in the winter time and stuff and make a mess. So um, I've got these plates in here and this particular piece of wall section is going on the husk there and that's going to that's going to establish our outside wall for the sawmill. And we've got some, some bracing in here, some 45 braces. And like I say, this is 6x6. Six six. And then on the top, we'll have our 6x6 uh, our six six timber. And then our rafters will sit on that and everything. But uh, for now, we're going to lift this up with the, um, with the CJ6 with the gin pole on it. And we're going to set it on the husk. And we're going to uh, we're going to plumb it up and stuff, and uh, put some bracing in, and I'll show you a different kind of different kind of welding, and um, I'll just show you the process as we go along and get it up there. Okay, guys, we're getting ready to uh, engage the winch and pick that piece of steel up. Uh, on a PTO winch, uh, you know, it's not like an electric winch, so you know, to pick up will be in first or second or third gear, however fast you want to go and to let down you're in reverse gear. Now on this twin stick PTO this operates the rear this operates the front but the way this one is designed the rear has to be engaged before you can put the front in so you may hear the compressor idling a little bit the belt might be catching um, the wrecker is out of gear you gotta make sure your whole rear system is out of gear before you engage the front I got both of these engaged 
I got the transfer case in neutral right now. Um, we'll be doing some driving and setting this, but um, right now I got the transfer case in neutral. Uh, we're in neutral right here, and uh, we'll fire it up, and uh, I'll put it in second gear, and we'll start to pick that guy up. Okay guys, we got this sitting where it needs to sit. Um, turns out it's a real windy day, so we're kind of fighting the wind right now. And we're a little out of plumb, depending on which way the wind blows. So we're going to get a couple tacks on this. We're going to adjust the plumbness. And, and then we'll weld it out. I've been getting some guys that want to see some arc welding. So we'll do one side with the flux core. Then we'll switch over to one side with 7018 and uh, we'll get this welded in there. And then I've got some braces going in, I'll show you that as well. But for now we're going to get some tacks on it with the, uh, with the suitcase welder and the flux core. And uh, I'll show you those going in. Okay guys, we're going to put a couple tacks in here. This thing is blowing around like crazy because of the wind. 
we still have it hooked up to the winch. Uh, it's rocking back and forth. Uh, it's got to be pulled in just a little bit. So we're going to put our tacks on this side. That'll draw it down. Hopefully it'll pull it right into plumb. If not, we'll do a little tweaking. We'll put a tack here, we'll put a tack here. We'll go on the other side and do the same thing with the flux core. And then we'll, and then we'll change up and we'll do a couple different kind of welds for you. We're still fighting the wind here. We've got it just about plumb. I'm going to run a bead right down here with the flux core. We got it on 21 volts, about 150 on the wire feed speed. And we're going to get this in there and I'll show you it'll bite right into that bottom half inch plate and into the wash right up onto the quarter inch plate. And we'll get that in and I'll show you how that goes. when you got your settings right with the flux core the flux should just peel right off like that and you can see we got a nice weld the bit right into the bottom plate came right up nice on the quarter inch that's a nice solid weld now if you guys have been asking me about the 7018 we're going to set up on the other side and I'm going to run that same joint with some 7018 arc rod Okay guys, we're going to run this one here with some 7018, this is some 8th inch 7018 rod, the welder set on uh, right around 130, 135, something like that. Um, we're going to put this in there and I'll show you the difference between this and the, uh, the flux core.
Okay guys, there's an arc bead there. Um, it's a little bit slower than the flux core. Uh, if your job calls for 7018, obviously you got to use it. But for, for this general fabrication we're doing here on the sawmill, uh, we're going to use the flux core. And um, this is the Hobart uh, XLR8. Uh, I like to use that 72 thousandths thick. And um, it's a good uh, structural wire and it meets codes and stuff. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the wire and it's much faster than the 7018. So we're going to switch back to that. But I hope a couple of those arc shots are uh, what you guys were looking for. A few guys that asked me. Um, now we've got this standing up. We've been fighting the wind all day. But um, I think we got it pretty plumb. You can see right there, we're perfect in the bubble. And we've got it perfect that way because our, our husk was uh, perfectly set. So we got that perfect. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to run and I'm going to get a couple bolts. We'll bolt this down solid. We'll bolt the other one down solid. We'll start fully welding around here and we'll put the braces in. And then finally we can get the uh, the winch and the gin pole off that and, uh, and wrap that up. So uh, let me get this bolted down I'll be right back with you.
Okay, we got our braces in. And there's the other side. And we're safe from the wind now. Everything is fully welded in, it's bolted down. Connected with the winch, everything is plumb, level, and that's the the very first part of the wall that's going up around this sawmill. You can see here, this is part of the track that's going in. The track is going to be 90 feet long, and the building will be just over 100 feet long, and that's one section of track. And I think through all the weeds, you can see the other section sitting up there. And that's what the wheels will go on, which our carriage will ride on. I think you get an idea. That's the outer wall of the, the lower part of the building here. And then the power plant, which is going to be the steam engine, will be sitting up you know another uh, about 30 inches higher that's why this side is so tall we want the roof line to carry through so our next project is to pour some footings and I think uh, I think I shot some video of it but um, I've got a 52 foot beam that's going in where the logs enter the sawmill the weeds overtook me this year but uh, here's that beam it's an 18 inch uh, wide flange beam 52 feet long and that's going to get tied into that steel structure that we just put up and that's going to go down that end where the logs enter the mill that's where the blade is and uh, that's the next project so we'll be pouring footings and lifting this guy up, setting this on some 6x6 six six posts with some bracing. And I will uh, shoot some footage of that as it happens. Okay, there's another shot of today's work. And um, if you like the videos, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see. We just took a day off from uh, uh, from some of that CJ3A work because uh, we've got some painted parts in there and I didn't want to make a mess over in a paint room and cause any dust in the shop to get in there. So uh, we've got parts painted for that vehicle and we're working on a sawmill a little bit. So we're coming along slowly. Uh, there's another shot of it there. And that gives us plenty of room for the track and the carriage to roll right through there. And um, like I say, I will show you that step by step as it happens. But um, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks for subscribing to the channel and, and being supporters. I know there's a lot of other channels out there you could be watching. So just want to tell everybody I appreciate you hanging around with me and watching my channel. And uh, hope you like what I'm doing. Anything you'd like to see, like I always say, just send a comment. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.